blocks we have seen that there is a common opening for three systems that is digestive system excretory system and the reproductive system now we will be talking about the system in male frogs in male frogs the system is called urinogenital system so it is urinogenital system and the name tells us that it is a common system for two parts that is for elimination of nitrogenous waste and for reproductive system and this is seen in case of male frogs in female frogs excretory system and reproductive systems are separate so we will talk about this system which is combination of urinary and genital that is reproductive in case of male frogs let us first talk about the excretory part excretion is done by a pair of kidneys so kidneys are large structures and on the kidney are present many fat bodies so there are many finger like structures which are called the fat bodies kidney is the structure which is going to remove the nitrogenous waste so now let us see how this kidney and the reproductive part they are connected so these are the kidneys the testes they are placed very close to the kidney so here actually they are on the kidney they are placed on the structure but to understand the connection between the two we are drawing the testes here so this is one this is the testes from the testes many small ducts <coughs> sorry are going to bring the sperms so the ducts their number normally varies from 10 to 12 these ducts they are known as vasa efferentia now these testes they are connected or they are attached to the kidneys with the help of a double membrane peritoneum this is a very thin transparent layer which is going to connect so here there is a membranous structure which is going to hold the testes and the kidneys together so this is the complete membranous structure which is going to hold these two things it is called mesorchium so testes and kidneys they basically are connected and the connection is in the form of thin membranous structure which is called the peritoneum and the name is mesorchium so if this is the kidney on top of it there would be the testes and they are connected with each other and these ducts that is the vasa efferentia they pass through the membrane now these vasa efferentia they actually enter the kidney and they open into a canal and this canal is known as bidder's canal so let us see how this canal is formed so this is the canal this is called the bidder's canal this is bidder's canal and now the job of the testes the testes are going to collect the nitrogenous waste by filtration the filtration is by the same structures that is like nephrons and all that waste will be collected here bidder's canal and this tube they are transversely connected so there is a network of ducts and these ducts are one is going to collect the nitrogenous waste and the bidder's canal is going to collect the sperms from the testes and now these two canals they join and a common duct emerges so from here a common duct is going to emerge this duct is called urinogenital duct 
and the reason why it is called urinogenital duct because it is bringing urine also and the sperms also. This urinogenital duct it opens into the rectum. In digestive system we made that longish tubular structure which is the rectum. So this one opens from here from the other end also there is going to be one tube which is going to break the urine as well as the gametes. So there are two dots which are going to open here. So when we talk about the reproductive part, the testes which are connected to the kidneys with the help of mesorchium, from here the sperms are taken by very fine dots, vasa efferentia, the number is not normally 10 to 12 from each uh, testes. They all open into a canal which is called Widder's canal. It joins with another duct which is bringing urine. These two ducts join to form the urinogenital duct which opens into the rectum. So this structure, rectum, it is actually a part of digestive system. So it is bringing the undigested food. It is bringing the waste, nitrogenous waste from the kidney and it is bringing the sperms also. And all these three things are going to be released from the same opening. And this opening is cloaca. So when we talk of cloaca, we say it is a common opening for three systems. Digestive, excretory and reproductive. And now when we talk about the urinary system. Urinary system means removal of nitrogenous waste. In case of frogs, adult frogs, the nitrogenous waste is urea. That means they are ureotelic. Whereas the larval stage, that is tadpole, are ammonotelic. So now there has to be a urinary bladder which is going to store the urine. So again, connected or opening into the rectum, there is a large urinary bladder which opens here. So now what happens is the urine which is brought by these ducts is stored in the bladder. So this is the urinary bladder. And these two openings are very close to the opening of the bladder. So from here the urine will be stored in the urinary bladder but it will be released through cloaca only. And from here the sperms will also come into the rectum and from here the sperms will also be released through cloaca. So adult frogs they excrete urea but the larval state that is tadpole they are a monotelic. So mode of excretion changes depending upon the habitat because tadpoles are aquatic and others they are amphibious that means they live on land as well as in water. So in case of male frogs the urinary system and the reproductive system they basically are together and this Bidder's canal is a very important structure which we have to remember. Now in the next part we will talk about female reproductive system.